I'm Highlight of VisionExperts.com. You can find this track on my SoundCloud, by the way. Today's topic is going to be about a rack extension that's called the Mix Food Orange from Korbach. Yes, Korbach is a Dutch uh, thing, I, I believe. I'm not sure, but I believe it is. The thing that I find cool with... Uh, this particular device is uh, that it supports a wide range of different waveforms with the previous installment you had um, uh, 79 waveforms with the latest versions there are even freaking 150 freaking four waveforms you go like what that, that's that's insane yes that's insane um the thing the thing with uh mixed food orange is that it's kind of like a rumpler uh, Rompler meaning it, there are predefined samples uh, recorded and these are put inside of the synth. Yeah, that sounds cheap. But the thing that I kind of like with this whole setup is that it's an easy access uh, synthesizer module. Uh, it's similar if you take a thing like this, and that's Jiggery Pokery MO1200. Uh, I love this thing to bits. Simply put, I have a whole bunch of different waveforms to choose from, and second of all, I can modulate the crap out of those waveforms, turning something old into something new. Um, the thing with uh, Mixed Food Orange, however, it's a polyphonic thing. Uh, ammo on the other hand is a monophonic thing, but you can uh, overcome that by using uh, multiple devices. Anyhow, this is a polyphonic thing. And the cool thing that I find with this uh, synthesizer setup as it is right now is that everything is on the screen. Uh, you have your pitch band wheel right there, you have your mod wheel controllers for the filter right there. I can cut it off right there using the mod wheel right there. Uh, I have my uh, filter setup right there. There, I can turn this into a high pass filter, or I can turn this into a band pass filter. I can turn this into a low pass filter. Right there. There is no real advanced modulation bus matrix taking place, it's really simplicity. This is something that I sometimes like. Sure, there are moments when I think like it should have something like this instead. It should have something like this instead. Well, you have your modulation bus matrix right there and you have different parameters to tweak and, and so on and so on but sure antidote is nice it's really advanced synthesizer sometimes i like simplicity uh, by its look and feel and its nature and this is where and this is where this whole thing comes in uh, <coughs> because it's an easy access tool that's all there is you have uh, something that's called a chorus you have your mix knob right there i can open it up right there and I get an instant detuned chorus sound effect coming through that whole thing. <coughs> Every uh, slot has their own unique filter type. This is a master filter that cuts through the complete mix down. Like you blend different waveforms together. But you can separate the different waveforms with different filter types if you want to. Um, <coughs> for instance over here I have oscillator 1 with a low pass filter. I can take oscillator 2. I can stick that on uh, a bandpass filter, balance it out, right there, right there, and I'm all set to go. Um, it kind of like feels like the subtractor, you know, this stupid thingy, uh, th this thingy, uh, that, that thingy, it has everything there. Uh, it has a similar look and feel to this whole thing because that's basically what 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 yeah you could call it that. Um, <coughs> you also have your basic noise filter thing on top of that whole thing. 
using this section right there, that's the lo-fi. can change the rate. Or I can change the amount, right there. Or I can balance it out, right there. Putting like a, uh, yeah, I call it the white noise on top of the whole thing. Uh, not really, it's not really the same. It's a nice touch. You also have your basic reverb setting over here. Maybe not the best reverb that's out there, but it's a cool thing that's actually there. It's built in. I don't have to attach different reverbs on top of this whole thing to turn a reverb sound on top of a sound. Uh, simply put. <coughs> uh, you have your basic uh, LFO settings right there. Uh, I can change the tune of this whole thing. That's pitch. I can change the rate. I get non tempo synchronized right there. And I can change the phase of the LFO. I can also make this more like a treble effect. Or I can pan the crap out of this whole thing using the pan up right there. have your basic filter envelope setting right there with an amount knob. Then you have your basic filter setup right there, a filter envelope. Ah, there you go. Um, this is the part what, which kind of puzzled me uh, in before. Over here you have a thing that's called the filter 1 uh, right there, and you have a filter 2. Um, in this case, the oscillator 1 goes through filter 1 right there. And while I cut off that whole frequency right there, I can use the decay setting to make it more like a picky note. But I'm a little bit puzzled what this LP12 does. I think it's more like a global filter thing, but I'm not sure. <coughs> because it, it kind of responds to something, because if I cut off the low pass filter right there, it basically does something. It could be like a linked filter, kind of like similar as the subtractor, but I'm not sure. I have to uh, look up the manual for that whole part. Anyhow. <coughs> Oscillator 2 over here uh, acts a little bit differently because uh, the system is a little bit differently. In that case, this thing actually has a flanger, while this one has a, f a phaser. Yeah, that sounds epic. Right there. Uh, I can also add a delay on top of this whole thing, but I can also change the delay time accordingly for one oscillator to another oscillator. I can actually think of some uh, cool possibilities over here. Oscillator 3 over here is in the same realm of Oscillator 1 over here. The major difference over here is that Oscillator 3 has a setting called Overdrive instead of using Filter Slope 3. Uh, 3. Uh, I'll just disable these right there. That's one, that's two. I can crank up the drive. Maybe not the best 
distortion type that's out there, but then it adds some, yeah, characteristics to the waveforms themselves. Um, which can be cool, but if you do it like that, then it's going to be like, ugh. But that's my take on it. <coughs> Anyhow. Um, one setting that I find really interesting over here, and that's the thing that's called the Haas effect. That thing can be enabled right there. I think you actually can hear the difference over here. I'll just drop the level on that one. Also, Oscillator 3 over here has its own reverb, it has its own flanger again, it has its own chorus. All awesome. And combine that with the 157, uh, 154 different waveforms that you have. Uh, I could call myself a happy customer. Let's toggle to the rear over here. Um, the rear over here is very basic. It has your basic input slots, like uh, you can uh, attach a uh, matrix pattern step sequence to the whole thing. Um, and uh, you can decide where you want the ID outputs from the independent oscillators to go to. You have your audio out there, there and there. That's cool if you get to use a parallel setup using different effect units, more or less using one single device. Anyways, I like this thing to bits. I'm already like uh, fond of uh, using it right now. Um, and it would be uh, great to, like, uh, let's say, uh, combine, say, uh, create utility, utility, utility line 6 to mixer. Uh, I'll attach this one right here. Stick the main out there and stick it right there, and I go all uh, shabam bam on this uh, using a uh, uh, instrument maelstrom. Right click, reset device, and uh, stick this in here, right there, right there, and go like this, go like that, go like that, 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 space it out. <laughs> And do it like this. Anyways, have lots of fun, and I'll talk to you later.